Vanquish, God Hard, Zero Deaths, and Maximum Time Bonus. This is 4-2, and it's called Brink. At the beginning, you're going to take on a couple of Viewhounds, which is probably my favourite enemy in the game, but you never fight them. You fight this enemy about three times in the entire campaign. They're such an interesting dude as well. When they fly around like that, they're, they're actually not very strong. But when they land, they're nuts. They turn into super sword dudes like Raiden, it's great. But once you've, you've got rid of them, you're going to move out into the open and you're going to engage the buzzard fight. And at the beginning of the buzzard fight is going to be an engagement against the, the shotgun uh, gorgies and then the buzzard flying around. So I'm just going to be as aggressive as I can and I'm going to get rid of all the, the blue guys before anything really happens. And then I'm going to iframe through a grenade, which don't tell me... Don't ask, sorry, how I did that. I have no idea how I did that. I got very lucky. And then we get to fight the buzzard. So... This is a, one of the missions that I didn't do single segment. Because I didn't think I could do it. And then ironically enough, I ended up doing the Argus and the BIAs in one hit, in one life. But I died, get this... I died on the fucking transport, like, the dude who rides that stupid platform with the gun on it, he killed me. So depressing. But anyway, there's going to be a crossfade at that point, so... Um, the buzzard is interesting, because you can do melee attacks against his hands, and they do full damage, but they don't overheat you. So this is one of the only situations in the game where Sam can spam melee attacks without punishment. And this gives you an idea of what this game would have been like if we could willy-nilly use our attacks. And I love it. This is one of my favourite enemies because of what I'm doing right now. I'm literally doing boost kicks into shotgun blasts on his face, and that's all it is. How easy did that look? And the buzzard is quite an intimidating foe when you, you pop out and shoot it and you, and you play it like a third-person shooter. But this is Vanquish. Vanquish rewards aggression. So it, once you realise you can do melee attacks on him for free, you're going to get way more aggressive and it gets super beautiful. Such a strong tool. But make sure that you replenish as much ammunition as you can. It'd be good to have grenades here. It'd be good to have a full shotgun here. It'd be good to have, you know, amenities that I potentially don't have. Um, you can also pick up the lock-on laser. That will help you in the next section. The hardest part about this level, if you're good at the Argus fights, which is kind of a pain in the ass, and if you're okay with the BIAs, which is also kind of a pain in the ass, it's getting rid of the Gorgies that are inside of the Argus fight. And there should be no Gorgies, in my opinion. This is one of the areas where I think the spawns are a little terrible. I don't think you should fight enemies when you're fighting a boss like that, because I think it's just a little bit too much, in my opinion. Same as this guy. This guy's a bitch. An absolute bitch. I hate this enemy, and the cover's being goofy right there. Sometimes the cover lets you out of cover when you don't want it to. It's one of the only downsides to the cover that I can think of. And I, you know, I'm a very critical player when it comes to the facets of video games, and I think the cover works 99% of the time, but there's this 1% of times where you get fucked, and it's really frustrating. But pick up the weapons on the way and get ready for the next sequence. So, in general, the Argus is not too bad as long as you can get rid of the people with him. You're going to see a crossfade coming up here, and it's going to transition to the uh, the place where you spawn um, afterwards. So, I boost all the way over here. I shotgun the first guy. I try and shotgun the second guy, and then I get knocked away by something. I don't even know what that was. That could have been the Argus's cannon, but normally the Argus's cannon is a one-shot, so I'm not entirely sure what happened. Um, maybe it wasn't direct impact, and it, and it knocked me away instead. I couldn't tell you. But all you want to do is focus on getting rid of these guys. Get rid of these little shits. As long as you can get it you and the boss, it becomes okay. And of course, there's a dude under the boss, because why would there not be? But here is the, the boss, so... The strategy is the same as it's always been. You want to stun the, the first phase so that you can hit the core. Once you destroy the core, it's going to transform, and then the, the final form is going to be the annoying uh, humanoid variant where you can never do as much damage as you wish you could do. In this particular form, the crab form, the enemy can do a whole host of nasty things. It can blow up cover if you're behind a bad thing. You can fire missiles like this, which are quite dangerous. So boost cancel, boost dodge, do everything you can to haul those iframes, get away from it. He can also do the crazy forward walking that kills you instantly. Uh, he can do a whole host of interesting tools. And we get a very lucky rocket drop just then. And then he moves into second phase. So in second phase, or in the transition, I like to just kind of hug a wall and boost cancel. Boost cancelling is a technique done where you start a boost and you cancel it with a dodge. If you do it correctly, you will hear the boost, but you will not see the flares. 
If you see the flares, uh, you are going into, I think, the part of the animation where the iframes are running out. So you want to hear it, but you don't want to see it. And that is uh, pretty much the, the perfect formula for the boost cancel. And I'm saying this 100% regurgitating what I read in the description of Zorok's video for boost cancelling. He is one of the best players of the game, and I believe him over other people, so... I'm just regurgitating information. In this phase, because we've got a rocket launcher, this can be done exceptionally quickly. Do you see that though? I fire a rocket and it does no damage. That is a problem in a video game, in my opinion. When you have resources that are this rare on God Hard Mode, when you have only three shots and you fire a missile directly at the enemy and it does zero damage, I think there's an issue there. So, I wasn't best pleased during this fight, you can imagine. Uh, I was actually rather angry because I find this to be a tricky encounter for time limits. Beating this boss is nothing. Doing it in a good time is everything. That's where things get frustrating. And I have a whole host of bad memories because of Giant. 1-3 is the hardest mission in the game for me, so I, uh, I really dislike it. But we got him pretty quickly thanks to the rocket launcher, and uh, he's going to do his suicide move, so what you want to do is you want to boost towards him and get behind him, because he cannot track as quickly with that move as you can move. If you are at a distance from him, you're in trouble, because that's when he gets maximum mobility with that technique. But you want to move around this room now and find whatever tools you can for the next sequence. I recommend, instead of a shotgun, putting on the LFE launcher, but you don't have to because there's definitely going to be one in the next sequence because that's the weapon that is probably the most effective against the BIAs. The BIAs are the hardest enemy in the game, I think. You only face a few of them. You face them three times, I think. And the third time you can skip, so that doesn't even matter. But there are only two real predominant fights against these creatures. The first one, of course, was at, is it the Stronghold back on 2-6, and now we get it back in 4-2. This one is worse because the cover isn't as good and the room isn't as big, so you do not have the same luxury that you had before. Don't worry though, guys, because there's a really, really interesting way of dealing with this enemy, and I'm going to show you. But because I didn't expect to get this so much, I hadn't practiced this part of this uh, particular fight, so this is a one attempt on this section. So, the turrets and everything right now, I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know the quickest way to kill them. I didn't know if, you know, you, do you chuck a grenade, do you stop time? Here come a couple of those balls, which really don't make any sense to me, because sometimes you can... I mean, see that? It rolled, and then it died by itself. Does anybody know why they do that? I don't get this game sometimes. And on other times, they don't do that. Other times, they, they don't explode. It's weird. But I just kind of went with it, shooting a couple of dudes. There's a turret guy left and there's a guy on the left, left. And I'm looking at this as a practice run, so I'm not in any kind of rush right now. I didn't expect to do this. So I just pepper him, just to get towards the turret, see if I can chuck a few grenades up and stop time, probably. Oh, I'm going to use the LFE to go through the cover and hit the, uh, the Gorgi, probably. But I might be thinking, I need the LFE for the, the baddie coming up, so it might be... I need to be careful doing that, too. That killed him, but it wasn't smart. Anyhow, so... The LFE gun is a guaranteed stun against the BIAs. I have a rocket launcher and EMPs, so my strategy is to get them both together and then hit them with everything I can. So I shoot from the side with the LFE gun and it stacks them up. Then I shoot their feet with the rocket launcher, then I hit them with the LFE gun and it stacks them up, then I shoot their feet with the rocket launcher, then I LFE gun them, or I try to and I fail, and then I rocket launcher again, even though I'm missing my reload cancels, and then the LFE gun is on, so I move all the way to the side and I'm just gonna try and go for the stun. So right now, what you can do, is you can do melee attacks if you want to, in between using your abilities, using the LFE gun. I use an EMP just then, and I shoot them, and then I use the LFE gun, and then I'm going to try and do a melee attack just then into LFE, and then I'm going to do more LFE, keep them stacked, keep hitting them, keep them stacked, and just kind of keep them trapped. And then at this point, I realize I've run out of my ability to keep them trapped, so I roll away, and I've overheated, so it gets real nerve-wracking. But what's in here? Let's have a look. Oh my god, a DLC weapon I can't use. So, this is when this got really scary. But I drop a, an EMP. I try and shoot with a gun that I don't have the, the right capacity to, to do that with. I hit him with the melee. I try and finish him off, but there's no way I'm finishing him off. His HP's too high. But I still go for it, and then I get put in crit by those, those flying weird bomb things in the guns or something. He's going to swing through the cover. We need to be very careful of that. There's an EMP into the cover. Shoot him in his weak point. Keep on blasting him. Keep at the distance where he can't hit me with the gun, but he doesn't go for the melee attack. Something made me flinch then, but didn't deal damage. That was weird. And then that's the end of the second BIA. So it got a bit hairy.
If I'd have had normal grenades for that sequence, we would have been fine. But I didn't. Because I could have thrown an EMP, and then I could have thrown three grenades, thrown an EMP, then gone back to the LFE gun, but I just didn't have the capacity for that. So 10 minutes and 4 seconds gives me the 5,000 points, the zero deaths gives me the zero deaths, and that's the end of one of the trickiest levels in Vanquish. Thank you very much for watching, and you take care now.